Welcome to what would normally be my God-powered series, but this week we're going to do something a little different. In fact, this really kind of is more like my Lord and Gladden series where we, we focus on leaders and entrepreneurs. But the more I thought about this content, the more I realized I think this is something timely for all of us. So when we look in Genesis 26, what we see is Isaac is facing a challenge. He's facing his own crisis. And in his case, it was a drought. And, and he starts out, Isaac starts out doing what most of us do, which is to try to solve the problem ourselves. So, so how, do you, how do you fix a drought? Well, you leave, you go somewhere else. So Isaac is left and he's on his way to Egypt. But God intervenes and God steps in. He says, don't go to Egypt, just stop here. And if you'll trust me, I will protect you and I will bless you. Now, so, so Isaac does something right. And that, what is that? He, he stops right there. He does. He, he doesn't go to Egypt. He decides to trust God. And instead of going what seems to make sense, he, he stays right there. But we're also going to see he made a mistake. So what does he do? Uh, this is great. He loves his wife, Rebecca, so much that what does he do? He lies to Abimelech and says that she's his sister because he believed that she's so beautiful, they're going to kill him to get to her. See, he was willing to trust God partially and that he didn't go to Egypt. But what did he do? He still dealt with something in his own strength. Now, here's the amazing grace of God. What does God do? God protects him. God intervenes with Abimelech. And even though he didn't make all the right choices, God continued to protect him. And then the story goes on. And this is a part of the story most of you know. So what happens? It goes on. It says, Isaac sowed in the land and he reaped a hundredfold increase. Now, there's lots of conjecture here. We don't know. Did God tell him to do it? I mean, why would you sow during a drought? We don't know. Did God tell him to? Did he just decide, God said he's going to bless me, so I'm going for it? We don't know. But here's what we do know. God did bless. God blessed what Isaac was doing. See, God had said, stay here. Don't solve this yourself. I will protect you. And what did God do? God was faithful to protect it even when Isaac made his own mistakes, even when he didn't always make the best choices, God's faithfulness, he protected him. And God blessed him. Again, whether God inspired him to take the action, whatever it was, God blessed him in spite of the lockdown. But the time came when the drought was ending. And Isaac just like all of us, you know, in many places, what are we seeing? We're seeing the lockdown starting to be lifted. We're starting to see maybe some glimmers of that light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. And I think all of us just want to go back and pick up where we left off. We, you know, I've heard people call it, we want to get back to normal. We want stability. But I, I really just, we want to pick up where we left off. But, but here's the piece of, of wisdom, I think, that God is saying to all of us. So Isaac went back to where he had been, but what did he do? It says he redug his father's wells. In other words, he didn't just pick up where he left off. He went back and he reestablished his foundation. What did he do? He reaffirmed, he re changed your names back to what his father had, Abraham had called him. He redug the wells. He reestablished his foundations. And I think for all of us, as we start to look at the, the lockdown being lifted in different ways, it's time for us to all look at, okay, Lord, what do we need to do? Isaac redug the wells. Before we just pick up, what should we be doing? Yeah, I'll share you a, a little story. So I, I was talking to my friend Ricardo from San Felipe this weekend. Now, Ricardo's business, like many, has really taken a hit because of the, the coronavirus. And so we're, we're talking, and, and, and Ricardo is really trying to figure out, he, he's got some things he wants to put in place. to attract. He needs to attract new business. The revenue's down. He's got staff to pay. And so one of the things we talked about is, hang on, take a step back. Before you go do that, before you focus on new business, take a step back and focus on the clients that you have already. 
show them there's some things he'd done communicate to your clients go back redig those wells communicate to them that you have proactively looked out for their best interest that you have proactively done what you could and you're actually saving them money in spite of everything before you focus on building more business take that step back and focus on your current clients focus on what you do have reaffirm them show them that you genuinely are looking out for their best interest then focus on getting those new clients you know for you and I I really want to challenge you what are the things that you and I need to do as things start to lift before we can get back to things as they were before we can just pick up where we left off and move forward what would the things where the Lord would say hold on now whether it's in ministry it's in business whatever it may be where God would say take a step back hang on redig the wells reestablish the foundation and then let me move you forward 